please welcome Robin. All right, good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Um, but before I begin, I just uh, I want to thank Peter, Peter, for the wonderful sharing. I think we sense your passion uh, to to improve the overall uh, fiber rollout uh, practices in Malaysia, and, and I think we appreciate that. Right, thank you. Um, now there was a story told to me by my colleague, uh, so I thought I'd share it with all of you today. Now one day, there was a man in a hot air balloon, and he realized that he was lost. So he reduced his altitude uh, and spotted a woman below. So he descended a little bit more and shouted to the woman, uh, excuse me, can you help me? I, I promised a friend I would meet him an hour ago, but I don't know where I am, all right? Then the woman below replied, sir, you are in a hot air balloon hovering approximately 30 feet above the ground. You're between 59 and 60 degrees north latitude and between 107 and 108 degrees west latitude. You must be an engineer, said the balloonist. The woman replied, yes, I am. How did you know? Well, answered the balloonist, he said, everything you told me is technically correct, but I have no idea what to make of your information. And the fact is, I'm still lost. Frankly, you've been no help to me at all. If anything, you've delayed my trip. Then the woman below replied to the man, you must be in management. And the man said, I am. How did you know? Well, said the woman, you don't know where you are or where you're going. You have risen to where you are due to a large quantity of hot air. You've made a promise which you have no idea how to keep, and you expect people beneath you to solve your problems. The fact is, you are in exactly the same position you were in before we met. But now, somehow, it is my fault. <laughs> All right. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I'd like to express my uh, sincere appreciation to the Fiber, the newly branded Fiber Network Council, right, uh, for the opportunity and the platform to speak to you today. Uh, just to share my views and some of my uh, the thoughts on the topic of the 5G infrastructure and backhauling challenges and opportunity. So it's always a pleasure to be able to, uh, to be in the company of fellow colleagues and friends from the telecom and the tower co industry. So just a quick introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Ruben, and I've been in the telecommunication industry for almost 18 years now. Uh, I started off my career as a transmission planning engineer uh, back in one of the mobile operators here in Malaysia. Uh, during the days of the Ericsson Minilink E radios, and the digital cross connect. So some of you, if you are smiling and nodding, uh, you know how old we are, right? <laughs> okay. It was also a time when the SDH microwave, the long haul microwave links, they ruled the high capacity backhaul space. Uh, the good old days of the Marconi radios, the Neras, the Nokia Simon SDH links. Uh, and just like many of you here, I had the privilege of experiencing the mobile network revolution from 2G, moving on to 2G with GPRS, and edge data, where 48 kilobytes of speed on your mobile phones were something, were considered the coolest thing ever, all right? And not too long after came the era of uh, 3G, and we finally moved into the golden era of mobile connectivity of 4G and 4G carrier aggregation, where data speeds grew exponentially and opened to us to a whole world of, uh, whole, a whole new world of digital possibilities. So during my time in, one, in the mobile operator, I had the opportunity to reinvent my career a few times, uh, given the opportunity to lead the RF planning team, uh, gaining a whole new level of appreciation and understanding of the work that RF engineers do, right, being the key component that connects customers to what matters most to them. And uh, not long after, I was also given the opportunity to lead the network uh, rollout team in DG. So one of the key highlights of the achievement that uh, we have accomplished together as a team was to build the fastest uh, 4G mobile network in Malaysia. And in the year 2021, about two years ago, I made the decision to then move into the tower industry uh, by joining e.co, uh, where I took on the role of uh, heading the, the, the rollout for e.co Malaysia and specifically heading the 5G uh, infrastructure rollout program for e.co and of course its subsidiary companies fully supporting DNB. All right, so move on to the next slide. Yep, you don't go. So just allow me to give you a brief introduction of the company, uh, who we are as an organization. So Edoco is uh, one of the leading 
integrated telecommunication infrastructure service providers in the ASEAN region and South Asia. Uh, we've been around for about 10 years now, and we are currently the sixth largest tower co in the world, uh, with a total of more than 54,000 owned and managed sites. Right? Edoco uh, currently has a business operation in nine countries in Asia, serving more than 181 million customers uh, via our tower infrastructure, which represents uh, approximately 27% of the total of 600 million mobile users in the markets that we operate in. So Edoco has a clear vision and strategy for the coming years, which is to shape Asia's future connectivity. Next slide, please. So there was, a, I think, this recurring theme of you know what had happened during the pandemic. Uh, during uh, we've seen how data has uh, how during the pandemic has been a catalyst, driving the growth in the digital and gig economy. All right, hence the increase in the data growth, especially for the telco industry. And we see data demand explode both in Southeast Asia and globally within those, the span of 2019 to 2021. Globally by almost 100%, uh, Asia by about 80%. And correspondingly, more people actually dropped below the poverty line at about 6%. So the digital divide between uh, the issue became even more apparent and became a top priority and focus for many governments around the world. And so during the global lockdown, people's lifestyles changed, their patterns changed. Uh, we observed more dark spots in existing ne network coverage areas. Uh, we recall cases here in Malaysia, people climbing trees to do their homework just to get network connectivity. Husbands and wives had to decide who gets to use the limited bandwidth to do their office work. And and so today we see internet as a basic human right in the modern world that we live in, just like water and oxygen, the air that we breathe, especially part of the 2020 decade where, which will be dominated by the Gen Zs and the, millennial, uh, the millennials. The fact that today we still have the unconnected, people with totally no internet connection, we have the underconnected category, uh, people who experience you know, slow internet speeds, um, it's also, we personally feel that it's a, it's, a basic, it's a violation of their basic human rights. So in the post-pandemic era, we still have about 300 million people in the world, adult population, who are still unconnected. And out of these 300 million, we, we estimate about 60% live in the Asian markets. And in addition, approximately 2 billion people globally do not have the 5 Mbps speed to be part of the gig economy. So, just a little bit of numbers here. Uh, the global digital economy runs on the bedrock of the telecom infrastructure. That today, it's about 105 trillion global economy and 16 trillion digital economy. They all run on 5 million towers, 50 gigawatts of power, and at least 1.1 million kilometer of fiber. And we estimate that data usage will be at least five times more and needing 10 million more telecom towers and double that of power within this decade. So we will need more street level uh, structures. We will need to bring fiber closer to these locations and find the right storage for data at the towers and to make the digital economy dream a reality. Next slide, please. All right, so this growth that we, that we foresee will be driven by technology evolution, especially in this decade, enabled by new infrastructure. So telecom network infrastructure architecture is also changing. Now we are moving to a more, we are moving into a dynamic multi-layer network uh, architecture to cater for the massive data demands. So telecom industry, we are actually bracing ourselves for a data explosion in the digital era. So this just does not mean more towers, but also rooftop level uh, structures, small cells, hanging on to street lights, minarets, church bells, wall mounted, uh, drone based, community based. So we are embracing for all these uh, 5G rollout promises, which uh, the 5G rollout which promises high speed internet. And to run use cases of manufacturing, e-commerce, ride hailing, crowdsourcing, telemedicine, so on and so forth. So the telecom infra companies play a crucial role to ensure the successful rollout of the new technology through building more street furniture level sites, refiberization and establishing strategically located edge computing and data centers. 
Next slide, please. So this is just some of the market outlook uh, that we foresee, uh, key consideration that will uh, change the telecom industry landscape. So these are some of the tailwinds. Uh, we see at least six tailwinds here and favorable market trends, key considerations that need to be addressed to make this happen. The first one is, of course, providing the infra for the unconnected, the underconnected, and the hyperconnected. Now, the unconnected, like so what I mentioned, is increasing the network coverage uh, 4G and 5G. That's important for that segment. We have the underconnected, which is to ensure they get high speed mobile connections, both downlink and uplink, and the hyper connected group. Now, this is the group that today they enjoy high speed internet. And it's important that we ensure they get low latency of connection for future apps like the metaverse. A second uh, favorable, uh, or a second market outlook that we see will be the sunrise and sunset of technologies, all right? So here in Malaysia, we have witnessed the sunset of 3G technology and reassigning the spectrum, which is a very precious commodity, into the 4G networks, which are more efficient for carrying voice and data services. And we're also ex we, uh, witnessing the expansion of the 5G networks in the 700 and 3,500 uh, spectrum. There will also be an increased demand for much faster throughputs and improved latency to support the metaverse. And we also see mobile operators restructuring their organizations set up to unlock value through corporate separations. For example, you see a lot of mobile operators carving up their towers. Another trend that we see is that uh, we need to allow uh, the necessary policy change to enable and assume the start of new telco evolution like open RAN and a more dynamic network configuration. And of course, number six is to ensure that we, uh, that tower costs maintain and lower the cost of GB uh, per, even with a capital intensive 5G rollout in a sustainable manner. But some of the headwinds that we foresee that is coming our way here is that, uh, first we see a cautious outlook into the economy growth here in Malaysia and the volatility in the global markets. Uh, we also are starting to see more mergers happening, uh, consolidation taking place. Here in Malaysia, we have recently concluded the DG Cellcom merger. Uh, and over in Thailand, in our neighboring country, True and DTEC are also, have also announced that merger discussions are taking place. And all this will have an impact in the growth and expansion of the tower infrastructure in the long run. And of course, the one of the key challenges that we see is the regulatory and policy changes, the high cost of doing business in certain parts of the country. So these are issues that, that we believe that needs to be tackled in order to really see a change in the telecom industry landscape. So we are a firm believer that strong collaboration, partnership between local authorities, regulators, and telecom service providers will transform the digital landscape and prepare us for the digital future. Next slide, please. So just uh, diving a little bit deeper into what's happening, some of the trends. So we see pre and post go, if you look at some of the information that we have, especially on the top left here, uh, we see that the amount of time that people actually spend on their phones, right, on their screens have increased from an average of three hours to, to now, which is almost five hours per day. Uh, I'm sure many of you can uh, attest to this. We may not believe it, but if you probably, if you actually evaluated the amount of time that we spent, it's probably around that range, all right? Five hours per day, spending online, uh, watching videos, contents, just to stimulating our minds, all right? And as for data usage applications, we see that uh, the biggest growth is in the video contents, the likes of the Facebook videos, YouTube, TikTok. But we foresee that in the next, in, within this, uh, this decade, we foresee there will be a significant growth in the IoT space uh, where remote monitoring, automated devices, and vehicles will grow significantly, right? So these are all the, good op the uh, growth opportunities based on the data demand drivers that we see. And, for, and after almost a decade of the 4G coverage expansion in Malaysia, we are able to achieve about 96% of the population coverage here in Malaysia. So it took us about that long, one, uh, almost a decade to reach that levels. Now, in the key markets where Idoco operates in, it is estimated that there's about 46 million of the population still living in unconnected areas. So this is where we foresee you know, fantastic opportunity for low Earth orbit satellite service providers such as Starlink 
to bridge the gap and bring us closer to the 100% population coverage target. For the underconnected group, there are at least 300 million of them still living in areas where mobile internet speeds are less than 8 Mbps. So we foresee that this area will be the biggest opportunity for growth for the telcos. And finally, we have the hyper-connected group where people want super fast internet speeds with low latency. So this opens up a whole new world of digital opportunities and the development of AR, VR, and the metaverse. Next slide. So we see that 5G rollout is still in the early stages, but will ramp up in 2023 onwards. So if you can look at the, the, graph, um, the, the, the graph on the left here, we see that we foresee that Malaysia will actually have the most significant growth in terms of the population coverage comparing to some of our neighboring countries. Uh, and this is actually based on the plan that was provided by uh, DNB. All right, so this will also be complemented by higher 4G internet speeds with the sunset of 3G networks. Okay. And if you can look on the right hand side, these are some of the requirements that, are, that I mentioned to you about the, the metaverse, all right? where the hyper-connected community, they will be the strong drive to demand rich increased bandwidth and downlink speeds to support the growth and development. Uh, digital, they, they would like richer digital experiences through AR and VR applications. Next slide. So we see that if you look at uh, some of the corporations, the telcos, they are currently delayering their functions to create more focus and value. So we foresee that this trend will be happening where telcos will, they will, they will shift the way that they run their business operations, where delayering and corporate separation will happen more rampantly. So one of the key drivers for this is to create value and to unlock the potential of a more customer-focused and business-driven organizations. So more and more telcos are carving out their tower infra assets and to focus on the core mobile business. And next, we see the evolution of the network ecosystems that may break the traditional network. So this aggregated network and the emergence of the open RAN and the evolution of the mobile network architectures. So this is a space, an interesting space, where tower coasts want to take a position in the fiber backhaul, fiber wholesale space providing mobile network operators with an end-to-end -end integrated telco infra solutions. So infra codes today play a more crucial role in the future network ecosystem. Right. And we look at the last box here, increased adoption in ESG standards by industry and investor financial institutions. So there will also be a greater awareness and adoption of ESG standards the way we run our business in a sustainable manner by the telcos and telcos globally, pledging towards carbon neutrality targets and net zero targets by the year 2050. So this opens up another opportunity for green energy solutions and innovations in the energy space, structure design, deploying leaner and smaller carbon uh, footprint structures. Next slide. So here's just a slide to show you on some of the next-gen products that Tower Coast are also looking. And mobile operators may not be too happy to see this, but this is where Tower Coast are slowly moving into this space, all right, which were predominantly owned by Telcos. So globally, we can see that Tower Coast are moving away from the traditional steel and you know, structure business and venturing into areas such as providing network and energy as a service. So here are just some of the examples that are currently available. You know, in the top row, you see these are available today here in Malaysia. Uh, you see fiber to the side, uh, where Tower Coast, we, we want to provide uh, fiber solution services, either through wholesale or through own-built fiber. We also have started deploying small cells, um, and uh, this, is, this, this covers both 4G and 5G small cells, which today we, they are already live and on-air sites. We also have active, uh, active dust solutions, which, are also, which have also been deployed, as well as uh, managed sites and power services. So these are some of the existing products, new Tawako products, which are currently available. And if you look at the bottom four, these are something that are the non-core business, all right? but these are something that are not here in Malaysia, but we foresee will come to Malaysia eventually. We are talking about private networks, data centers, edge computings, the likes of uh, smart cities and, of course, 
rural telephony. Okay? Next slide. So, whatever I mentioned just now, just to give you an idea where are we, or what's happening around us, you know, in, in our neighboring countries, but we take a closer look at what's happening here in Malaysia, all right? The 5G infrastructure and backhauling uh, development here in Malaysia. So, uh, as of today, uh, DNB, we know, has uh, the single wholesale network for 5G, has deployed more than 4,000 base stations, all right? And, um, from the first deployment to where we are today, it took them about 15 months. So 4,000 new base stations in 15 months is actually quite a uh, daunting task. Um, just to put things into perspective, if you combine all the mobile operators, DG, Maxis, Cellcom, U-Mobile, YTL, Telecom, VB, if you combine all of them together, they have never ever done 4,000 base, new base station sites in a year. So when we saw this target, we knew that it was going to be a tough, uh, it was going to be a tall order for DNB. Um, and so today with that 4,000, uh, the reported POP coverage, population coverage is currently stands at 50%, all right, 50%, which is estimated at about 15 million of the Malaysian population, all right. Um, I mentioned in the slides here, 121,000 concurrent users, but as I was driving along the highway, I saw a lot of the 5G, uh, advertisement on the digital billboards, the latest number is actually 200 over 1,000. 200 over 1,000 concurrent uh, 5G users. And we're talking about an, uh, an excess of 426 terabytes of data usage per day. And this is growing by the day, all right? And the current average downlink speed, we're talking about 350 meg downlink speed, which is about 10 times more uh, faster than the current 4G networks, all right? And so E.co, together with many other NFPs, uh, licensees have been involved in the 5G rollout uh, here in Malaysia. Uh, we have seen a, a range of structures deployed to support 5G. Uh, we have rooftop sites. We have the traditional ground-based towers. You have lampposts, street lampposts, street furnitures, active IBS dust, and even small cells. All this has, uh, these are some of the products that uh, all the NFPs here in Malaysia has been uh, deploying for DNB. Uh, and to just put things into perspective, Malaysia, we have at least 300, more than 350 NFP licensees, all right? More than 350 companies who can build structures. Um, but I believe that there are at least more than 90 of them who are involved in the 5G rollout with DNB, okay? And so we look at the, the last two points there. Um, this year, we foresee that there'll be another 3,000, more than 3,500 new 5G base stations to be deployed. Right uh, by the year end, and this would bring us to this would bring DNB around Malaysia 5G coverage to at least 80 percent of the population coverage. All right, and if you look beyond 2025, uh, we foresee that this there will be an increased demand for street level furniture, small cell requirements. So just to put things into context, uh, today in the 4G network, a typical mobile operator would have one to two base stations per square kilometer. And we foresee that by the end of this decade, this would go up to at least 100 small cells or base station, 5G base station within per square kilometer. And we will see that, we, we foresee that this will be the demand, uh, even as the, we will start rolling out millimeter wave networks, small cells. So we will see a strong demand uh, for small cells infrastructure or street level furniture. Uh, so and this is the place, this is the space that Tower Coast wants to get involved in, right? And the key thing is that um, with all these fancy things that I'm talking to you about, what is important is actually the fiber backhaul network. And I'm happy to, to, to hear that um, for the 5G rollout in Malaysia, uh, more than 80% of the 4,000 sites that have been rolled out today are connected with fiber. So I think this is an amazing achievement, uh, especially I believe it's the work of Telecom Malaysia, uh, whom we work closely with for the 5G rollout. Um, and that is actually much more, the percentage is actually much higher than the current 4G network itself uh, owned by the mobile operators, which I believe is somewhere around the 40% range. 40% of the current base stations, of the 4G base stations are currently fiberized. And we see that 5G is at 80%, so I think this is some fantastic, and we are moving in the right direction. Okay? Next slide. So in closing, all right, in closing, so here are just some of the key um, the critical call for actions for the telecom industry and the regulations to enable a robust telecom infrastructure industry to deliver the next wave of the digital economy. Number one, of course, is to have a conducive regulatory environment. 
where regulators without roll-up restriction, um, floor ceiling prices, demand control, facilitating the rollout to be easy, and reducing the cost of doing business. And we also see that uh, Infraco is actually a very capital-intensive business where the in our investors are expecting double-digit dollar returns, all right? So to drive more capital inflow from foreign investors, central banks, policymakers should consider establishing a more conducive business environment. Uh, we see the need for, to involve the current regulatory framework for infrastructure to provide fiber, storage, power, and radio units. And with innovation in play, all right, Tower Coast business models will go beyond metal and grass. It is no longer the real, just a business of real estate as it is. And in the near future, Tower Coast will be a technology player, uh, institutionalizing new technologies that will enable a digital nation. And finally, regulators will play a key role in creating a fair and competitive environment for Tower Coast to support the growth of the digital economy through innovation, 5G infra deployment, ease of rollout, collaborating with mobile operators to achieve the digital aspirations and economy blueprint of our nation. Thank you for your time and have a good evening ahead.